This is a story about Miguap, the teepee lodge. Uh, my name is C. Pieces Marsland, a Sigasan. I'm Bear Clan from Treaty 6 territory. I'm Orcadian and Scandinavian, Woodlands and Plains Cree, and a member of the Lac La Ronge Indian Band. And I live in the, the Tri Council communities. What we did today is cre creating that, that indigenous healing and indigenous indigenous um, um, education, like land-based knowledge. I mean, this is what it's about, it's about teaching community and out in nature and healing. This is from years of practice, Mary Robin. <laughs> <laughs> Or do our best to lift the teepee because we were told that it was a woman's role from before in the past and we allow men to do start doing things but we have to correct where we make mistakes so I, I'm thankful all of you came here to support us in our journey of reclaiming our our roles in society and respecting the men to do theirs and us to do ours. So today, today is the start of National Addictions Awareness Week and we met because we were part of a, a walk for sobriety that started at the band office and ended up at uh, the Lac La Ronge Indian Band's Urban Reserve downtown. And after this walk for sobriety, we were there to help set up a grandfather lodge is what I'm told. Yeah, so the TP teachings are given to us from... Um, well passed down from generation to generation. My teepee teachings come from a couple different um, elders. Mm. So the first elder that shared um, a teepee teaching with me was my mushroom from Surgeon Lake First Nation, and his name was Johnny Charles. The words that he used when he explained it was, when you look at... Um, when you look at the teepee, that teepee is um, is feminine. The teepee represents the woman. And that was like one of the first teachings that I ever received um, as, as a young as a young lady or um, in Digigaji. So that was like instrumental in, in just my knowledge bundle to carry that knowledge forward. Uh, the teepee teachings um, are taught from um, uh, Indigenous perspective, and it's rooted in Indigenous ways of knowing, being, and doing. So it is um, it is uh, a ceremony, and it was done today to honor the men of the North and for um, empowerment. What is a, what is what makes a, a TP a grandfather, and why why was this one why was this one set up by women? So just honoring Indigenous men and the, the role that they have to play, because normally, um, you know, we see Indigenous men um, putting up teepees, mm -hmm. and uh, it's it's this was reversed. Mm -hmm. So in that in that aspect, it was it was very special. Mm -hmm. What songs were you playing? Were you drumming today? Well, um, the songs, there's a ver variety of songs that we we played today. Some songs were for specifically Indigenous healing. In the beginning, I mean, we had the um, the Strong Woman song, you know, just to, to get all of the women all, all together and, you know, just to honor. And also um, in recognition of where we were. Right, and all of the, all of the missing and murdered Indigenous women, and um, other songs were honor songs, so honoring, um, honoring our ancestors and honoring each other, all of our relations, um, as the, and the honor song was played during the, the three pole listing of the grandfather lodge, and then we had the. Uh, it's a it's a Nishinaabe traveling song, and that was to honor our our ancestors and all of our relations.
um, a teaching by Elder Mary Lee um, in Saskatoon. She talks about uh, the values of the teepee and the teepee poles and what they represent. Mm. So each teepee pole has um, a representation for a principle, so a guiding principle for Indigenous uh, people and families, communities. Um, the people involved, it's, it's really about the values the, and having a good mind and a good heart and those core values of Indigogy. And those are cultural core competencies of Indigenous peoples. So um, having, being healthy, being well for individuals, communities, and families. Everything about putting up a teepee and lifting a teepee, a teepee raising, is uh, ceremonial. The first one is obedience. So we listen to our elders' stories. That transmission of knowledge is so important. The second is respect. So honoring ourselves, our elders, our families, our friends, and making those good decisions that honor and integrity. Mm. The third is humility. So knowing that everyone around the circle is, is, is equal, and there's no one better than another person, and we all have um, a connection to one another. So making good choices that reflect, reflect uh, that for the next seven generations. Is there any special significance to the to the three poles that that started? I know we said that there's many here and they carry a, a, their own amazing meaning, and every everybody that lives in this region should should look up um, the the meaning of each of these poles, the full fifteen, because they're beautiful. Um, is there and but the three that are initially bound? Is there any? Uh, I guess that was obedience, respect, and humility. Or is there anything that separates those as being uh, especially core? Because they're the ones that start the TP, right? Well, I mean, the TP teachings, the three in the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. um, obedience, respect, and humility. I mean, we can also look at three, you know, the number three and what that is. Yeah, You're looking at, um, same with braids, you know, for braids of hair. It is, um, you know, the, it's it's stronger together, mm. right? Mm. So those, those, there's so many teachings. Those three uh, TP bowls, they're tied together. And they're they're used as a foundation to build, mm, right? Mm. So and it's it's like body, mind, yeah, and spirit. Totally. So it could body, mind, and spirit. It could be uh, you know the family system, which is mm, the community, mm. uh, family, and self. Mm. Or two partners and a child, if you want to say it that way. Yeah, it could be All that. All resolutions, right? Right? It could, you know, I mean, it's just kind of, you know, foundational. There's wow. different sacred numbers, you know, sacred economics, sure. you know, that are involved too. There's indigenous science. So it involves like so much. Wow. Um, it's not just a, you know, a simple, you know, it embodies everything. It's yeah. indigenous. Out of respect for all the elders, the knowledge keepers, aunties, uncles, grandmothers, great-grandfathers, out, uh, out of respect to everyone, bringing that humility in to the teepee. So we have to be aware that there are other teachings and they come from different people and different voices. Um, the fourth teaching, happiness. So um, how our actions impact the world. And, and how that, that recognizes the ancestors. And when we live in a good way and we have a healthy mind, our level of wellness is up and we're happier. So we're honoring ourselves, but we're also honoring the ancestors and those that walked with us before and those walked with us now. So, and those are the, our past loved ones. So I believe um, the greatest the greatest atrocity that happened with Indigenous people was the disconnection to our land and our culture. But with that, that disconnection from our ancestors. Hmm. So I just want to make note that where we were today, uh, two residential schools, All Saints residential schools, stood on that land for 114 years. Mm -hmm. So 
that brings us to the next the next uh, TP teaching, which is love. So love being unconditional and love being kindness and embedded in the indigenous psyche, the indigenous being, um, way of life, mm. and how we think about and operate in, um, you know, the world we exist. Um, so that love, that decolonizing love, that decolonizing love is what brought us out there today to raise, to lift the, the T peoples. That decolonizing love is the same um, value and principle that makes it so that we can we can still move forward um, even though of systemic racism or um, or just uh, really high social determinants of health so high incarceration rates with indigenous people um, right. lots of addictions um, with you know um, and because it's that decolonizing love that propels us forward so that we have the drive and determination to continue on our heart road journey for wellness. So wellness of mind, body, and spirit. So that is decolonizing love and the, the reason why we do what we do as Indigenous people and why we raise the teepee pool today in the teepee, to honor our men, to honor our youth and and those that are afflicted with addictions and mental health issues, so that we can say it's a reconnection to to ourselves, the earth, and that healthy wellness mm. that comes from that, that strength that comes from that. So then that moves on to the sixth TP teaching, which is faith. Mm. So ceremony is a way of life, and what we've mm. done today is a way of life. So, um, yeah, and then there's also, you know, there's, I think we have maybe seven more teachings. <laughs> so there's a lot of teachings. <laughs> yeah. It's done. Um, all of these values is for, uh, it teaches us how to walk a good life. We use the term Otakwanahona, meaning her shawl. The teepee canvas covers its poles like that old woman and her shawl. As it comes around the teepee, it embraces all the teachings, the values of the community that the women hold. No matter how many children and grandchildren come into that circle, she always has room for more. The seventh pole is kinship, Wakotuin. Wakotuin is important in understanding that our kinship can be created through friendship. Um, it's not just about family, it's about supporting one another and there's always going to be people behind your back that you least expected to be there watching over you or that will be there during a challenging time in your life. So the eighth pole is cleanliness. And today we think hygiene, and that's very important, but spiritual cleansliness. We have clean thoughts that come from a clean mind. Therefore, we, do, we don't inflict others with our ill thoughts and our ills that we carry, like the negative energy that some of us may be carrying due to toxic stress. Cleansliness could be, be sobriety to some, um, just cleansliness is bringing in that smudge and that that good energy the tenth pole is sharing Bakwenamatoin. eleven is strength not physical strength but spiritual strength we must learn to be patient in times of trouble and to not complain but to endure and show understanding we're accepting the difficulties and the tragedies that we face in life. This is strength. To, rem to remember that patience is not simply the ability to wait. It's, it's how we behave while we're waiting. Is from Joyce Mayer. The twelfth pole is good child rearing. Children are gifts from creator and we're responsible for their well-being. 
The thirteenth pole is hope. Pagose emoin. Pagose emoin. <laughs> hope is kind of. It's having that that it interconnects with faith, right? And hope is having that belief. Giving our children hope is super important um, for them to continue moving forward and in the trials and the struggles that they may face. Um, but just having that reminder as we grow, you know, utilizing hope in in our in our the way we raise our children, they'll utilize that in their life down the road. They'll have that hope. They'll have that faith. Um, number 14, the 14th pole is the ultimate protection. This is the responsibility to achieve balance and well-being of the body, the mind, emotions, and spirit for any individual, family member, community, and nation. Ultimate protection. 15 is the control flaps. And the control flaps are found um, on the teepee where it looks like they're the arms of the of the woman opening her arms up those are the control flaps and there's a really important teaching behind the control flaps and it's that we're all connected by relationship we depend on one another right and so when this connection is respected and understood we have balance and harmony Uh, but when when we don't the tp gets very smoky and you can't see which is how our relationships and how life can get so when we set up the teepee and um, we have that relationship with the direction we're setting it up and, and how, what direction the wind is blowing, we have to have that relationship with the wind and the this, this spirit of Mother Nature and also the relationship with our, our fellow family members or friends that we're setting this teepee up with. That relationship is very important um, when we're putting on the grandmother's shawl of the teepee. When uh, when we set up the, con- the control flaps correctly, the smoke doesn't come and cloud us and make us get all smoky inside the teepee and, and have to get out. And um, that's how life can get if we're not connecting properly with each other and having those solidified relationships. Looking back uh, at the sobriety walk uh, that Men of the North had put on in June, and I saw uh, Mr. Harold Johnson. So I just I find it really interesting that life has a way of coming full circle. And I see Harold Johnson, the author of Firewater, and now we're on this this next um, uh, sobriety walk, and we're putting up the, a grandfather lodge that young Tristan DeRocher fasted in for 44 days in Wascona Park in Regina this past summer. So it's just it's funny how... Um, are things are all connected, and I, I just wonder: is do you? How does that hit you? Do you feel any significance of setting up um, what is, I guess, a, a historical TP now? Well, a historical TP. Um, well, yes, absolutely. Um, it's uh, it's powerful. Mm. Um, it. I'm trying to formulate my words. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Take your time. <laughs> <laughs> Take my time. Yeah, I had no idea that that was the same really? TV that really? Tristan DeRocher fasted in. That's what you set up days. today. That's, that's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It is said in story that the women were named after the fire that burns in the center of the teepee, which brought that warmth and comfort. In our Cree language, fire is iskotil, woman is isquil, and more than one woman is isquiwak. So, so now that I found out that you know this is a you know the same the same teepee that that you know. Mm-hmm. Justin DeRoche was in for 40 days and, you know, for, for the children and youth, mm-hmm. um, and of, you know, the high rates of, um, suicide, mm-hmm. Saskatchewan mm-hmm. and the need, the need for, for, um, you know, support being put in place. So, um, yeah. So, I mean, the constant, I guess 
decolonizing love, right, is what brings us forward in, in, in spite of a, a constant siege um, where it's, uh, you know, indigenous um, rights and indigenous sovereignty and it is, you know, there needs to be a space for it. Mm. So I think social justice and social activism as um, with indigenous people and land stewardship and, um, you know, the, the plight for indigenous wellness mm. um, with, in a very colonial system. Mm. I mean, this is, um, you know, this is decolonizing love is what we did today to raise that teepee in the north. So it's an act of, of, of uh, uh, the revitalization of cultural language and ceremony, mm. and it's an act of um, the resurgence of indigeneity to the north, because the north was very heavily colonized for 114 years. But we have the Gradual Civilization Act in 1857 that is supposed to assimilate indigenous people. And then we have, you know, the Indian Act, the very assimilistic policies, mm -hmm. you know, with Duncan Campbell Scott. Um, I, I'm going to kill the Indian and the child, right? So the North is very heavily colonized, and today was an act of resurgence of indigeneity. So honoring indige indigogy, and basically um, that's the way, you know, I mean, that is a very powerful teepee.